Who says no? Who says no? I wouldn't lie to anyone. Everybody else says yes. Who says yes? Hands up. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. So the next question. You have offered to sell your house for three hundred thousand dollars to the buyer. Your reservation price is two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That is, you will be willing to sell it. To the buyer for as low as $250,000. Okay, do you remember reservation price? Okay, it's the last price you'll sell then for. Probably a little bit higher than your balance. During the negotiation, the buyer asks you directly, Are you willing to sell your house for $250,000? And you say to the buyer, No, absolutely not. Have you committed fraud? Remember, there's three points to the fraud. Fraud is, let's look at the definition again, false representation of a fact that is relied on by the other side. Okay? So think, in this case, is it fraud or not? So discuss with your partner. Sell your house for two hundred fifty thousand. You already think you will, but you tell them no. Is it fraud? So hands up. Who thinks it's fraud? Who thinks it's not fraud? Okay, why is it not fraud? It's correct. It's not fraud. Why is it not fraud? Can anybody tell me? It's a kind of strategy in the negotiation because it also in the some of possibility. So okay. So in the first case, false is it false representation? Is that false representation? It's not fraud, but there's three parts to fraud. False representation of a fact that is relied on by the other side. So my first question is, is it a false representation? Yes. Yes, lying is a false representation, right? And false representation is a nice way to say lying. You lied, right? Is it a fact? Yes. Are we talking about a fact, the price of the house? Yes, right? It's a fact. We're talking about the price of the house. That's a fact. Okay. Uh, then, is it, finally, is it relied on by the other side? Does the other side rely on what you say you're going to sell your house for or not? No. They don't, right? They don't, they think you might change your mind later. They're not relying on this fact to make their decision, okay? They know that that's part of the game, as you said, it's a tactic or part of the strategy. So it's not the kind of representation that is relied on by the other side. No buyer would rely on your statement that I'm willing to buy at this price or sell at this price, okay? They know that that can change later. So that's why that's not fraud. They're not relying on this to make their decision. Do you have any question about that? No? So this is about fraud. Uh, 
Let's try another uh, question here. So a real estate developer hires an agent. This one question is about fiduciary, fiduciary duty. The duty of trust and loyalty to your employer. Okay. So a real estate developer hires an agent. He asks the agent to try to find a $10 million loan for a real estate development. The real estate developer says he will pay $50,000 to the agent if you come up with a loan. So he needs to find a $10 million loan. Is it easy to get a loan for $10 million? Do you want to get a loan for $10 million? Develop some real estate and sell it at a profit? Hmm? If I gave you a loan of $10 million, would you take it for real estate development? You could buy a land and make a shopping center or some apartments and then sell the apartments. Would you take the money? The interest rate is low? Yes, why not? Right? Anybody would take a loan to be a real estate developer. Right? You can make an easy profit, buy the land, develop the house. If you can get the planning permission from the government, sell the houses. Okay? So the point is it's not easy to get a loan to build the houses. So there, he's going to pay the agent commission to find a loan. So the agent was successful. They eventually found an insurance company and they arranged a loan, 10 million loan. The insurance company was happy because they are making the loan and getting a profit. And they decided to pay a finer fee to the agent. So they paid some money to the agent. Then the agent accepted the finer fee from the insurance company, maybe around $50,000. And then the agent went back to the developer and said, Okay, I'm ready, pay me my $50,000 that you said you would promise, you promised to pay me if I found a loan. But the developer said, No, I'm not going to pay you because you got some money from the insurance company. So the case went to court. What do you think was the result in this case? If you're the judge, what are you going to say? The developer refused to pay the commission that they promised to the agent because the agent got paid by the insurance company too, the lending company too. So the judge has to, to decide, should the developer pay the agent $50,000 or not? So discuss with your partner, yes? Because they were happy that he, made, he, found, he found him a cost, customer, they want to make the loan. They'll make a profit from the loan. So they were happy that the agent found the customer, so they decided to pay. After they said, okay, we'll pay you some money. What gets the insurance company? What gets the insurance company? What does the insurance company get? The interest payment on the loan. Banks want to make loans because they get the interest payment. They make profit by getting the deposit at a cheap rate and lending at a higher rate. They make profit. Pay a commission is the legal or the legal? Le legal, yeah, commission. Commission is just like some payment for doing something. So the developer found out that the agent got a payment from the insurance company and he doesn't want to pay now. So is the developer right or wrong? You're the judge. What are you going to decide? So let's have a show of hands. Who says that the developer should pay the 50,000? Who says no, the developer doesn't have to pay the 50,000? So why should the developer pay the 50,000? Promise. You made a promise to pay 50,000? 
Okay. So the court decided that the agent was not entitled to the 50,000 commission. Because agents owe a fiduciary duty to their owners, in this case the real estate developer. By accepting a payment from the other side, the agent breached their fiduciary duty. Okay, so they were getting paid by the developer to find the best, to find a loan. So because they got paid by the insurance company, maybe they weren't acting in the interest of the, of the developer, right? They're getting money from the insurance company, maybe they're not getting the best deal for the developer. Maybe there's another loan, which is cheaper. But they chose this insurance company because they got some payment from the insurance company. So they're break this is called breaking the fiduciary duty. Okay? To their employer. The agent was being paid by both sides. They sh their duty of loyalty should only have been for the real estate developer. That's why the real estate developer was paying the agent. Okay? He was paying the agent to be loyal to him. So you have duty to your employer for getting paid. To be loyal to the employer. Okay? So if you get paid by somebody else too, the opposite side, maybe you're not being loyal. So the court decided they didn't have to pay. So if you're an agent and this situation happens, how, how could it be possible that it would be okay for the agent to be paid 50,000 by the developer and also get the finder's fees from the insurance company? So discuss with your partner. The way that they did it was illegal, but what would be a legal way? How could the agent get paid by both sides legally? Before accepting the finder's fee, he could have gone to the developer and explained the situation. He could have said, I found you the best deal, but after I got the deal, the insurance company wanted to pay me some money. Can I accept the money or not? Right? So explain the situation to the developer. Okay? Then the developer might say, yes, you can accept the money. Then, then it's okay. The finder's fee is a kind of tip or the incentive? Yes. <coughs> Otherwise, the agent could have acted as a true finder, so he, he should have, could have not worked for either party. Okay? So he could have not been the employee of the, the uh, developer. Okay? He could have just, just worked independently and got the money from both sides. So next question, are these deals okay? This is testing both the fraud and the fiduciary duty. First one is fraud. You bought a farm from a farmer and the mineral rights from the farmer without disclosing the discovery you made of gold on the farm. So you found some gold on the farm. Do you understand farm? Do you have a farm? No. No? Does your family have a farm? Anybody from a farming family? Your grandfather has a farm. Does he have gold on his farm? So you find gold on your grandfather's farm, right? One day you're playing, what do you play at your grandfather's house? 
Play with the cows. So one day you're playing with the cows, you're having some good fun, and you trip over. Oh, what's that? It's gold. <laughs> right? Then you dig up some of the ground. Oh, a lot of gold in the ground. Right? So then you go to your grandfather and you say, Grandfather, I'm very interested in farming. I know I was studying about global business, but now I changed my mind. I want to be a farmer. Can I buy your farm? And your grandfather is very happy. He said, yes. <laughs> yes, my grandson, I'll sell you my farm. Okay? And you say, oh, also, grandfather, I want to buy some rice for any mineral which is in the ground. It's not important. Don't worry about that. I'm sure there's no mineral in the ground, right? Your grandfather says, oh, that's okay, don't worry, there's no mineral in the ground. So then you don't tell him anything about the gold, and you buy the farm. Is that okay or not okay? Fraud or not fraud? Discuss with your partner. Hmm? First case. Representation. If your grandfather asked you, is there gold on the farm? And you said, no, there's no gold on the farm. Yeah. Then is it fraud? Yeah. Yes, right? But you didn't, he didn't ask you, you didn't tell him, right? Then he doesn't know about that, it's not fraud. Okay? So you're dealing at arm's length with the farmer, there's no general duty. Okay, you don't have to tell them there's gold on the farm. Okay? If they ask you, then you have to tell them. But if they don't ask you, you don't have to say that there's gold on the farm. Okay? So now you can go, are you going to go looking for gold <laughs> next weekend? Where is your grandfather's farm? <laughs> don't know? Are you going to go there looking for gold next weekend? <laughs> no? Okay, so then the next one is uh, you buy stock in a mining company you are working for, from another shareholder. So you're working for the mining company, and you go to some place, some fields, and you find gold, right? Great, our company is going to be do well, and we found, I found gold. The company can now work in this area. But uh, as soon as you find gold, Without telling anybody that you found gold, you start buying the stock of the company. Is that okay or not okay? okay. So I'll discuss with your partner if that's okay or not, and why or why not. So you find gold, you're working for the mining company, and you don't disclose. Do you understand disclose? Yes. What does another way to say disclose? Disclose is tell. Easy way to say close, disclose is tell. Disclose is we use for information. Okay? Disclose information means tell somebody about something they don't know about. Stockholders are owners of the company, right? I'm also a stockholder, but I'm an employee. I found gold, and now I start buying up all the stock. Before I tell the company, before I tell anybody, 
I start buying stock. One of the other owners. Is that legal or illegal? So hands up who thinks that's legal? Who thinks it's illegal? Hey, it's illegal, so why is it illegal? Yes. Why is that illegal? Mining company is combined uh, all the shareholders. Mm -hmm. uh, if I working the digging of gold, is gold is the sharing the company mm -hmm. product. Uh, yes, gold is a company product. So, so what kind of duty do I have to the owners of the company? What's the name? It begins with F, ends with Y. What? Have a guess? Try? Fishionary. Fiduciary. We have a fiduciary duty to the company. Okay? Can everybody say fiduciary? Can you say fiduciary? It's not easy to say. Fiduciary? Fiduciary, fiduciary, fiduciary. So this kind of duty means that I. Uh, you have to act in the interest of the company, the owners of the company. If you are buying the stock from them at a too cheap price, you're not acting in their interest. Okay? So, uh, you're an employee of the company. You're buying stock from one of the other owners. You owe a fiduciary duty to those owners. There's insider trading. This is insider trading. That's a law. It's illegal. And every country has insider trading laws. Insider trading means I know some inside information about the company I'm working for. So I start to trade the stocks based on that inside information. So that can happen and people can go to jail. Okay? Like in horse racing, people have some inside information about the horse. The horse is injured or sick. That kind of thing, right? Same for the stock. They have some inside information. But it's illegal to use that. Okay. Uh, the last one then, unconscionability. So, uh, we have two different types. Procedural unconscionability. Does one party have an absence of choice because of unequal bargaining power? Or substantive conscionability. Are the terms of the contract reasonable or not? Okay. So, in the first case, uh, we could find there was a case of some restaurant in the US. They made a contract with the workers. The contract said, you have to go to arbitration if there's a problem in the contract. Then one employee didn't want to do arbitration. They wanted to do litigation against the company. So they had, the court had to decide, is the contract okay or is it unconscionable? So the court decided that this was procedurally unconscionable because the restaurant chain didn't, the employee didn't have any choice. The restaurant chain was too powerful. Okay? So they forced their employees to sign this contract. The contract said, I'm not going to sue my employer. Do you understand sue? Yes. I'm not going to sue my employer. So that kind of contract is, is not fair. And unconscionable just means not fair, right? Not right, not correct. So, the second one, are the terms of the contract unreasonable? So discuss this question with your partner. So I, I'm going to give you $10 and you give me $20. That's a contract. Is this a legal contract? Discuss with your partner. We make a contract. I'll give you ten dollars. You give me twenty dollars. Why? Just it's just the situation. Is it okay for us to make this contract legal? What do you think? <laughs> it is a legal contract. Why? 
It's a contract, so if it's a contract, it must be legal. Yes. Every contract is legal. Um, if they made a contract text. Mm. So well, I can make any kind of contract and it will be legal between two people. Can I make a contract with you to kill her? <laughs> is that a legal contract or a legal contract? We made a contract and I paid you some money. You can see in the movie, you're a contract killer. Is that a legal contract or a legal contract? <laughs> Are all contracts legal? No. No, they're not. Is this a legal contract? What do you think? You said legal. Why? <laughs> but you can't say it's, a, it's legal just because it's a contract. So that's why they have this idea, right? Unconscionability, that it's wrong, it's unfair. Are the terms of the contract unreasonable? Okay, so if you make a very unreasonable contract with somebody, they can say it's illegal because it's unconscionable. It's wrong. Okay, so maybe that's a new idea. If something is completely unfair, it's not a legal contract. Okay? It could be caused because one party has more power than the other party. It could be caused because one person is much smarter than the other person. One person might have mental disability, okay? I ask them to sell me their house for $10. I'll give them this lollipop extra. <laughs> they say, okay. It's not a legal contract, okay? It's, it's, not, it's just completely unfair. Do you have any question about this idea? So we can't make a contract. I can't make a contract with you to give you $20 for $10. Okay, so then let's uh, talk about some voluntary standards, ethical standards and guidelines. So, most people have some place they get their ethics from. Okay? We can have organizational standards. If your employer has a code of conduct, does it provide standards for the negotiation? Okay? So most uh, companies have organizational standards. When I worked in the company in Ireland before, we had a code of ethics. So if I was working with children, I'm not allowed to have the child alone in my car. There should always be somebody else in the car at the same time as the child. It's not illegal, but it's unethical, right? Or I shouldn't touch children. Okay, that's again, it's a code of ethics. So the company can have some standards. It can be somebody you admire. Who is somebody you admire, and what would they do in, in that situation? Okay, so for example, one young lawyer, uh, got some uh, contract information, was faxed by the other side, the other company. By mistake, they sent an email to the young lawyer, and he was really happy. He said, we found out all this confidential information they sent us by mistake. So he went to, his, to the CEO of the company. He thought the CEO would be very happy. But the CEO told him, no, just delete the email and don't look at the email. Okay? Because it would be wrong to look at the confidential information. So for the young lawyer, the CEO of the legal company was somebody he admired. So he said, what would that person do in this situation? If he had a problem in the future, he said, what would the CEO do? Okay. Do you have somebody you admire? What would you think, what would that person do? Okay. Christians often say, what would Jesus do? in that situation, right? Family test. How would you feel when describing to your family what you did during a negotiation? Similar, so if you came home and told your family, your parents, would, it, would they say that's okay or not? Right? Would you think it's okay to tell your family and they would accept that? That's another test. Newspaper test. There's going to be an article in the local paper describing what you did during a negotiation on the front page would you be okay with that or not? Okay. Can you understand the idea? 
everybody is going to find out about what you did in the negotiation. Is that okay or not? Okay. Then the golden rule is uh, if you go to the UN, you'll see this rule written on the wall, on the entrance, because all of the religions in the world have this rule, which is treat others as you want to be treated. Apart from the Vikings, but Vikings don't exist anymore. Right? <laughs> Most of the, the uh, religions. So, uh, we have to think that fairness is very important for the other side. So let's look at organizational standards. Do you know Johnson & Johnson? Oh, yes. What do they make? What kind of things do they make? Cosmetic and other things. Medical equipment. They also make a pharmaceutical product, okay, medicine. So they made some pharmaceutical product called ty Tylenol. Did you hear about this case? Yes. Tylenol. And somebody was poisoned after taking the Tylenol. So Johnson & Johnson decided to recall 31 million bottles of Tylenol. It's a lot. They lost 100 million. In the end, they found out it was just somebody put poison in the tablet, in the shop. It wasn't Johnson & Johnson's fault. But Johnson & Johnson decided to do that just in case. Why? Because this is their standard. They said, we believe our first responsibility is to doctors, nurses and patients. Then to mothers and fathers and all others use our products. Okay? So the injured parties were using their products. And their first responsibility was to their customer. So because this is their organizational ethic or standard, they follow that. So if you're working in the organization, you can follow the code of ethics or standards in that organization. <clears throat> Golden rule, do not to others as you would have them do unto you. Treating other people like you want to be treated, treating other people fairly. So we already did the, the uh, experiment in the class. We asked, if I give you a hundred dollars, right? then you have to decide how much to give to him. But if he thinks it's not fair, he can say no. So it may be that you lose money. Okay? You have another situation where somebody was employed doing a job last year. And then this year I decide to reduce their salary. Even though they are not going to do any work, or they have nothing to do, they're just going to be staying at home, they might say, that's not fair. I don't like that you reduced my salary, so I'm not going to to do the job. So I lose and you lose. Could be lose-lose. So people often think about fairness. If it's not fair, you can end up with a lose-lose situation. Okay? So attorneys or lawyers often hear from their clients, should be an A here, I want to sue that company. They treated me unfairly. Okay? This attorney tries to say, look, it's going to cost you a lot of money to sue the company. But people don't mind. They say, I don't mind if I lose my job, if I lose my salary, if I have to spend a lot of money. The company was unfair to me, so I want to sue them. So that is what can happen if you don't treat people fairly. Okay? They, may, they might lose and you might lose together. So this is a good rule to use in negotiations, to treat people fairly. You end up in a bad situation. Do you know Warren Buffett? So Warren Buffet is a famous investor. Okay? He's often invited to universities to do the valediction speech. So after the students graduate, the famous person speak, speaks at the famous university. So he's from Nebraska in Canada. So he went to Nebraska to talk to the students. And at that speech, he told the students that there was one thing that they can have that's very important. What do you think that was? Some students were asking him, what do they need to do to make a good career and develop themselves? Right? And Warren Buffet told them there's one key thing that they can have. Trust. Ethic, ethical behavior and trust, right? <laughs> According to Warren Buffet, that was the most important thing because you can develop, he says you can develop your other abilities, you can do this, you can do that. But if you always act in the correct way, in the fair way and the ethical way, then people respect you in the workplace. Okay? And people who do business with you respect you. And you get some reputation in the company and reputation in your life. And that he said, anybody can do that. Any, it doesn't matter if you're not the smartest person in the world. 
Okay, anybody can be an ethical person. So according to Warren Buffet, that's a very important trait for all workers to be ethical. So he always he works with that kind of way. So he decided to buy a $23 million company from Walmart. So typically there's a lot of transaction cost when you buy a company. You have to pay billions of dollars in legal and accounting fees. So your lawyers need to check everything, the accountants need to check all the accounts, right? But Warren Buffet trusted the other side, and the other side trusted Warren Buffet. Because of Warren Buffet's re reputation, he has a reputation of being very ethical in dealing with people, and fair. And Walmart also had a good uh, reputation for dealing with uh, the other side. So they did a negotiation which just took a two-hour meeting and a handshake. And so they both trusted each other. He trusted them and they trusted him. So they were able to save a lot of money. So by, by doing things fairly and getting a reputation for fairness, you can make a financial benefit. Okay? It may be that in one negotiation, you weren't fair to the other side, and you think, that's great, I got an extra $2,000, right? But that might not be in the long term. They might tell the other people, oh, this company treated me very badly, and this person was really unfair then you lose your reputation. Right? Your company also can lose the reputation. Do you agree with Warren Buffet? Do you think being an ethical person is something everybody can do? Yes. yes? Do you think it's a useful skill to have in your career? To be ethical? Yes. Fair? Have that kind of reputation? <clears throat> so then, uh, Finally, let's just discuss this question. Which voluntary ethical guideline do you like and why? Or which one would you use? So we had five. We had these three. We had the golden rule and the newspaper test. So can you remember golden rule and newspaper test? And we put these three up here. So discuss with your partner. Which standard do you like? Or which one would you use and why? Organizational standards, someone you admire, family test, newspaper test, or golden rule. Well, which one do you like the best and why? Which one do you prefer from those five and why? And if there is some et different ethical standard that you think about or you use, you can also tell your partner. Okay, so is there any ethical standard that you use in your life? Right? Or any different one you can think of? Apart from these ones. I don't know. 
Okay, so yang yang sa. Which one do you prefer? I can't hear you. Golden rule, why? Yes, that's what the first part of the question was. But why? No reasons. It's chaos. Fairness? What about fairness? I think fairness is very important. Treating people fairly is very important. Uh, e Sung Ho, what about you? Sorry? Why? Why? Objective, what do you mean? Easier to measure, you mean? Than the other ones? Okay, so just to sum up, uh, select one or more of the ethical standards to use for guidance when you have some ethical issue. Okay? So just you can use more than one. Sometimes when ethical issues arise, it's hard to select a standard in the heat of the moment. So you can adopt one or more of these. Before, before the negotiation should be clear, you should have some ethical standard by which you behave. Okay? So you know that when you're prepared. Do you understand in the heat of the moment? The heat of the moment, you might would you would you lie or would you say something or would you do this or do that? You have to decide quickly. So if you already have some guideline, you can think about oh what would my mentor do? Or what would the golden rule, or would I put this in the newspaper? Okay? Can help you to, to decide what's the right thing to do. Okay? We also discussed about moral philosophy. You can also try to develop your moral philosophy by reading about the philosophy. So then, uh, we, this is as far as we'll study for the midterm exam. So we, we already discussed the chapters on the book. We studied on the website. We studied uh, week two, right? Uh, should I negotiate dispute resolution, analyzing the negotiation? We didn't study cross-cultural negotiations or agents yet, okay? But apart from that, we studied the other parts on the week two on the website. And we studied on week five, we studied about the ADR, ADR concept tools, Arbitration and mediation. Okay? So we studied on week two and week five on this website. So that's the material chapter one, two, four, five, six, and seven in the book, and week two and week five, except some part on the website. Okay, so you can also look back on the this website, okay, on the video. If there was some part you didn't understand well. Do you have any question about the test? We'll do a review next week on the Tuesday class and then we'll have the test on sorry on the Thursday class. Do you have any question about the test? The test is 30% of your final grade, right? 30% is your final presentation, and because it's negotiation class. There is a high grade for participation, which is 30%, which means I'm watching you while you're doing your negotiations. Right? Yes? Uh, 
So it might be easier to read the PDF documents uh, in that case. But if you purchase the book, you don't have to print all of the chapters, right? You can print the, chapter, the relevant chapters. Or you can just read on the screen. The book has some very practical examples, some stories or practical examples of the case, so it helps to understand it sometimes. Any more questions? Okay then, let's finish there for today.